Hey everyone, professional photographer Ian Plant here, and I just spent two weeks in the amazing Badlands of South Dakota, putting Sony's 12 to 24 millimeter f 2.8 lens to the test. This is a lens for full frame cameras. It's an ultra wide zoom. And I asked the question, is this the best ultra wide zoom ever made? Well, if you want to find out, then stay tuned. Okay, so today I'm gonna to take a quick look at Sony's 12 to 24 millimeter f 2.8 lens. Now this is different than the 12 to 24 millimeter f4 lens. The f4 lens is one of their G series lenses, so kind of like their pro lenses. And this 12 to 24 f 2.8 is one of their G master lenses. So this is the best of the best of their pro lenses. And it's got all the newest features built into this lens. And both of the lenses, the f4 and the f 2.8 are made for full frame cameras. So they're FE mount lenses for Sony. And you can use them on a crop sensor camera, but it's kind of overkill because they're made for the full frame. So you're gonna have a crop factor. So the 12 to 24 isn't gonna be an ultra wide zoom anymore. It's just gonna be a wide angle zoom. So it's better if you are using a crop sensor camera not to use one of these full frame lenses because they're just bigger and more expensive and heavier than you would need. So it's better to buy a lens that's actually optimized for the crop sensor system. So these are for the full frame cameras and 12 millimeters is an extremely wide angle of view. And there's really not a lot of lenses out there that go any wider than this for a full frame camera. And so of course there are fisheye lenses and fisheye lenses are specialty lenses. They're not corrected for rectilinear distortion, so they have all this barrel distortion and they create this kind of weird funhouse effect. So the 12 to 24 is rectilinear corrected, which means it's wide angle, but it's not a fisheye. So it's correcting for all of that barrel distortion. And you know, there's really not much that's comparable out there. The widest lenses that I know of that are out there include Canon's 11 to 24 millimeter, and that is just a little bit wider than the 12 to 24 millimeter on the Sony camera system. And then of course you've got the Nikon 14 to 24. Uh, you've got some third party lenses like uh, Sigma, I think they've got a 12 to 24. And then you've got a bunch of fixed focal lengths from some of the smaller third-party companies like uh, Venus Optics has got their Laowa range of lenses and they've got a nine millimeter and a 12 millimeter. A 12 to 24 is about as wide as you can go for the most part. You can go a little bit wider with these third-party options, but if you're using the Sony system and you wanna have something that's flexible, easy to use, where you don't lose any of the advanced features of the Sony camera, then certainly the F4 or the F2.8 lens is the way to go. So the first question is, who is this lens for? For, what kinds of users would find this lens useful? So I do landscape predominantly and I love doing ultra wide landscape photography. So I spend a lot of time working at these ultra wide focal lengths. So 12 millimeters, 14 millimeters, 16 millimeters, probably 99% of my landscape shots are taken at these focal lengths. So I really love the ultra wide perspective. The wider I can go, the better. You could also use this lens for architecture and this is also a great lens for nighttime photographers, especially especially with that bright 2.8 aperture. So it allows you to go very wide and capture the entire Milky Way. And that's something that I think a lot of nighttime photographers would really appreciate. So if you're thinking of doing ultra wide photography, I guess the next question is whether this lens is gonna be good for what you wanna do. And I think I'm gonna talk about the advantages of the lens second. I'm gonna start first by talking about the disadvantages, why you might wanna stay away from this lens. And really those disadvantages are centered around size and weight and price. So this is a big lens. You can see that it's actually bigger than the camera, probably about just as heavy, maybe a little bit heavier. So when you're using this on your Sony camera, you might find it to be a little uh, front loaded and prone to tipping over if you're not careful. So it's a big and bulky lens, though I should say it's not as big and bulky as some other ultra wide zooms I've used. So for years I used the Canon system and I used the 11 to 24 millimeter lens, which was my absolute favorite lens for the longest time. And this lens here, the 12 to 24 f 2.8, actually is a little bit smaller and lighter weight. I think you maybe save about 30% on size and weight. So it's actually not quite as big, probably more similar in size to the Nikon 14 to 24. So it's a big lens, but it's not the biggest lens in the world. And also you wanna remember that because it's a zoom lens, it covers a lot of different focal lengths. So in my kit, if I had fixed focal length lenses, I'd probably have like a 12, maybe a 15, maybe a 17 millimeter, and then maybe a 24 or something like that. I'd have four lenses to cover the same range 
that I can cover with this lens. So when you think of it that way, it actually isn't that big and heavy and bulky. And so when I'm doing landscape work, I can just grab this lens and go out there and this covers everything that I need. Second of all, this lens is very expensive. It comes in at about $3,000, so it's not for everyone. Certainly when you compare it to the 12 to 24 F4 lens, that lens looks smaller and cheaper. So it's certainly an option you might wanna consider if you're on a budget and you wanna save some weight. Now, both the F4 and the F2.8 have this Popeye lens design. So the glass uh, is concave and it sticks out. And so for both lenses, that makes filter use very difficult. You can't just screw on a filter on the front. If you wanna use filters on these lenses, you have got to get a specialized oversized filter kit and they tend to be very expensive, very big, very bulky, very difficult to use. I actually just don't use filters when I use my ultra wide lenses. And there are only a few instances where I might want to use filters anyways. So I just kind of make do without them. And if there is a, you know, sometimes a situation where I want to use filters, like going to photograph streams and waterfalls, I'll bring along like a 16 to 35 where I can use a polarizer filter just right on the front without having to get one of those big filter holders. And that works just fine for me. So when I'm using this lens, I don't actually use filters. Now, the lens does have a rear filter slot, so you can cut out a small gel and put it in, but that's really only for neutral density filters. You can't do a polarizer in the back or anything like that. So it is there if you need it, but it is of limited utility. So this lens, very big, very expensive, very difficult to use filters. Why would you want it, especially if you've got cheaper alternatives out there or if you've got alternatives where it might be easier to use filters? So let's talk about the pros of this lens. And I think the number one pro is its optical performance. This is an engineering marvel and I think it is easily hands down the best ultra wide zoom I have ever used. Now I've used a bunch of them. As I said, I use the Nikon 14 to 24 in the past, the Canon 11 to 24, the Tamron 15 to 30. I've used a bunch of ultra wide primes as well. And they're all really good lenses. I've been very happy with all of them, but the Sony 12 to 24 F 2.8 edges them out. And I think it's fair to say that the F 2.8 lens edges out the F4 lens. So the F4 lens is pretty good optically, but it gets mushy in the corners. And this is pretty common with ultra wide designs. And I would be very frustrated with the lenses I've used in the past. They would look nice and sharp in the center, but you get into the corners and everything just looks a little less sharp, a little bit mushy. This lens is just tack sharp from center to corner. Now, when you're shooting wide open, you're not gonna get that tack sharpness in the corners, but once you stop down to like F8 on this lens, you get really great optical performance from center all the way to the edge, all the way to the extreme corners. This is the best performance I've ever seen on an ultra wide focal length. And the fact that it's in a zoom lens is just astonishing. So I'm very impressed with the sharpness of this lens. Also, I'm extremely impressed with how well it controls chromatic aberration. I have seen virtually no evidence of chromatic aberration in any of the shots I have taken in the past two weeks in the Badlands, and that is just incredible. So chromatic aberration is that color fringing that you'll see, especially in high contrast areas. So when you've got something in the landscape sticking up into the sky, for example, you've got that bright sky, you've got that shadowed landscape, you might see some yellow or some green or some purple or cyan or red fringing in that area. That's chromatic aberration, it's a lens defect. And most lenses today correct pretty well for chromatic aberration. And it's actually a pretty easy fix when you go into like Adobe Lightroom, you just click on a button and you can get rid of that chromatic aberration. But this lens produces virtually none at all. And so you don't even have to do that fix. Your shots are clean to begin with. And at the end of the day, it's really not that big of a deal. As I said, it's a pretty easy fix in Lightroom these days. But I think overall, if you don't have to fix chromatic aberration, it probably enhances your overall image quality by just a little bit. So it's a good thing. And another thing this lens does very well is shooting into the sun. So I like to shoot into the sun a lot. I like having sun stars in my photos. And so you want to have two things when you're shooting into the sun for your lens. You want to have a lens that is well coated so that it reduces and mitigates flare as much as possible. So you want to avoid those weird colored blobs that result from getting flare. And you also want a lens that produces a really nice sun star. And so the first thing is very objective. We can actually test how well a lens resists flare. And I think this lens resists 
flare extremely well. I think it resists flare better than any of the other ultra wide zooms or fixed focal length lenses that I've used in the past. And I'm really impressed with it. I didn't do that much shooting into the sun when I was in the Badlands, but when I did, it was typically in conditions that were less than ideal. So there might've been some bright clouds around the sun and that can usually result in a lot of flare. It's very difficult to shoot into the sun with conditions like that. And I was extremely impressed by the fact that I was able to shoot into the sun with this lens and produce virtually no flare. That's not to say that this lens never produces flare, you know, under really bad conditions when you're shooting directly into the sun while the sun's high in the sky, you're definitely gonna get some lens flare. And usually when I'm shooting into the sun, when I'm trying to produce that sun star, I've got the sun partially blocked by something to help reduce the amount of flare. And when I shot in those conditions, this lens performed very well. I found that I really didn't have to be as careful as I am with other lenses, and I was able to have more of that sun peeking out from behind that distant landform. So I was able to get a stronger sun star and still not get any flare. Very, very impressed with the flare resistance on this lens. So objectively, this lens handles shooting into the light, handles flare very well. Let's go to the second variable, which is the quality of the sun star. And this is more subjective. So this lens has got nine diaphragm blades in its aperture and they're rounded. And some people don't like the way those sun stars look. I'm actually used to using lenses that have that configuration. So I actually like the sun stars here for this lens, but some people might not like them as much. So it's really up to you whether you like the sun stars created by this lens or not. For me, I think they look great and I love the flare resistance of this lens. That means I can shoot into the light more often. That means I'm gonna get usable images when I do that. And to me, that is the most important thing. This lens just really performs so very well when shooting into the light. I absolutely love it. So yes, this lens is big, it's heavy, it's expensive, and filters are really difficult to use on it, but the optical quality of this lens is astonishing. Easily one of the best lenses I have ever used. I'm really happy with it. I'm so happy to have gotten my hands on this copy. Sony was generous to lend it to me for a few weeks, but now it's gotta go back, and suddenly I'm very sad. I'm gonna have to get my hands on another copy of this lens very soon, so Sony, if you're watching, it would be nice if you would send me a free copy. Thank you very much. But until then, I'm gonna have to make do with all my other lenses, so this is gonna have to be an acquisition for me in the near future. The Sony 12 to 24 millimeter F 2.8 ultra wide zoom lens, it is a fantastic lens. And if you like shooting ultra wide like I do, and you're shooting with a Sony camera, then definitely this is the lens to get. I'm Ian Plant, and thanks for watching.